gracious ladies and kind gentlemen what we do this night is broadcast in ways closely paralleling your own television sets. Those that accompany me this evening are many. Some of your own dear, dear souls are here with us tonight. And many are here not having been here before, but having been invited. I am not alone speaking of those of this planet, but with great joy I am able to tell you that we are hosts and hostesses tonight to those that have come yet from other systems of worlds in that their grand scheme closely interfaces with our own. These are things I myself have only recently come to know, my dear ones, how wondrous then is this grand, grand plan. Do not think that the earth, Terra, is the only planet that has gone through such convolutions and then the rising and falling of the gender. I tell you there be beings with us this evening that you might call feminine in nature who have also known something of suppressions on their home planets. So this goes well beyond your solar system, my dear friends, and like a magnet it draws its own. Women have been made to feel isolated Women by nature have a sense that they are self-contained units and they are in a way a bit distinct from the masculine temperament. This is precisely why men seem to work better in teams. Women not all the time, save for a lofty purpose. The woman then becomes the womb of creation, regardless of whether her offspring are physical or not. Womenize those who can cause grand schemes to be born. And though the man might seem or sound like the instigating element, which she often is. It is often she or they, referencing women, who eventually cause it all to happen. You know something of astrology. Man then corresponds to the planet Mars, doesn't he? Those knowing something of the Martian temperament 
know it to be that which begins yes which instigates which impregnates but not always that which remains to see that the seed comes to fruition that is woman's job and her privilege what if I told you that the very universe of sight and sound as you know it could not would not exist if it were not for the Divine Mother what if I told you that the Divine Father is pure idea constantly begetting idea after idea but that matter mother is the only thing that causes those ideas to become what any might call reality would you appreciate women a bit more then and yet and yet without those ideas without that seed what is she to do how can she raise a family that's not been planted shall she twiddle her thumbs eternally I say it is the twain my dears the twain and thus I come not to trumpet woman as above man any more than I should say that the heart is greater than the mind for you've all had cause to note what occurs when heart hath not mind to guide her I speak now not to women alone not to men alone I speak to the soul which is the composite of both your thoughts my dears whether you be man or woman your thoughts are of your father yeah. your inspiration so often is directly from your sire but what is it that takes that and causes it to have anything at all that would be in common with all of that which is manifest reality if not the mother within you this so-called mystery is mystery no longer yet I say that this mystery lies within each and every one of you even this very second all here no exception have been impregnated by the father gentlemen forgive me but you've all been impregnated by your father idea indeed what are you yourself if not an idea yes there are no exceptions here you are all God's idea the father's idea but shall you remain idea alone herein lies the secret you need your feminine self she who loves nourishes and is patient ever so very patient she's the one that will cause you to come to ultimate fruition just like a good mom wipes the mouth of the little boy and says now go kiss your father good night it isn't about gender my dears it's about polarity it's about that aspect of mother that's being damaged in all of you it's about a terrible terrible misunderstanding occurring so very long ago that's been aimed at keeping the mother limping and handicapped 
it's that thing that stands betwixt your will, your intention, your desire, and your reality. What stops you, my dears? You know good and well what you want. There's not one here who's alienated from his or her desires. How is it that they do not sit next to you? It is the mother that shall bring them about. You've got plans, you say. I say, that is your father speaking. Shall they come to pass? Then you must be in very good terms with your mum. One thing at a time, one day at a time. This is the way that a mother teaches her child, isn't it? She does not rush the infant to walk. But when that infant is ready, her hands are the ones that raise him up. So think, my dear, dear souls, on this if you would, and how within each of your breasts lies the secret of love, which has always been the secret of creation, isn't it? First you are. The product of the two. You've come that far then you of your own accord find yourself with goals, desires, directions, hopes. That is your father beckoning you forward as a good father will. Come along, come along, take that step. And the little toddler looks at his mum. Can I do it? Go on, go to your dad. It's all within each one, my dears. There's no getting away from it. You see, thus, I come not to speak to women alone. How could I? If without a man, I should not myself be here. I come to speak of the marriage deep within the soul. Hopefully, by distinguishing the different parts of consciousness, you now can repair to either, depending upon what is your need. For behold, there are some of you seated here who feel bereft of goals. You've got no plans to speak of, do you? You feel uh, out to sea, I think they say. Nothing draws you. It's a bit droll, isn't it? Nothing calls you forward, save ruts and habit patterns, and perhaps even your dreary, drudgy little television sets. But these are not the father. The father says, I am the idea that will deliver you out of your tediousness. I am he who, speaking, awakens you to what can be, and I know you better than anyone. Lo, light at the end of the tunnel, some would say, but to get there, mother must accompany you. Mother is the back upon which you shall ride to get there. My dear, dear friends, I can scarcely accredit the grace that I am privileged to share with you now and forever. What is that grace? If not mother and father in perfect loving embrace, he doing his part and she doing hers constantly 
and in perfect balance. That is grace. And when you feel it, it is that feeling of the child looking lovingly at both mother and father. You would know something of creation. I say in most cases it shall fall into one or the next. Having the pattern, father, then you've got only to tap mother's milk, the love that shall see it through. Love you not the pattern enough, it will not manifest for you. And so we hear again that what has been oft thought of is maudlin and sentimental. Love, love, love. Not as a sentiment, but as the very creative force that brings the apple to your mouth. What then is the next step? Simplify, simplify. Your father is constantly speaking. His ideas are infinite. Are you bewildered, having heard too many? Perhaps there is no blasphemy in this thing that I speak. In other words, perhaps you've got too many pots on the fire. My dear friends, it's time to take a few off. Simplify, won't you? You'll feel better, I promise you. One, two, three at the most should be the grand dreams of your souls. Accomplishing these, then you can graduate to the next higher level. Knowing these, you'll find how much love you can muster, how much mother you can bring to bear. For she, I say, is that thing causing it all to come true. Look into your hearts, my dears. If you are unhappy, this is likely the cause. Simplify. Set aside one or two and focus on one or two at the most. And love those into fruition. Expecting not your brethren to understand, in likelihood they shall not. But you know what you're doing. We've given you a formula. Now you can use it. Try it, my dear friends. And watch, watch, watch. How by simplifying your wish list, you'll accomplish the top two and have a smile on your face more often than not. Don't complicate it. No, no, don't complicate it, my dears, no. Keep it simple, very, very simple. Ultimately, the Father himself has come down to but one, one goal, and the mother is constantly in the process of helping him accomplish it. Can't we do likewise? I leave it to you to discern what that might be. Like good children, we are all of us engaged in the accomplishment of the same. Such is my simple message this evening Greater than this, I cannot say. Some of you here are holding the most intricate 
and beautiful puzzles in your hands. And lovely though they be, they bedevil you. I say drop them. And there be some here who have only recently got a new direction in which to move. These need to simplify to accomplish. And there is one here who has a great fear that others do not understand nor love that soul. But that of course is illusion. For loving yourself is the solution. Two of you here have got the need to look to the care of your physical sight. Kindly do so. You'll create better. One here fears the worst, the very worst, that you shall die a terrible drawn out painful death of the physical body. Pluck that weed, dear one, it serves you not, neither shall it feed anyone else. Decide that such is not your fate and accept the magic of the moment. And all of you here shall realize before this calendar year has run its full course that there's little you can't have and that of course fulfills my goal. I'll love you until you do. God bless you my dears. Enjoy your tea won't you? Perhaps upon the next eve that we again join I'll have yet another lovely trinket out of the father's pocket and I leave it with you as an apport. Estelle wants me to convey to everyone here, and I'm, you know, understanding it myself as I'm getting it from her, that she wants, the, she used the term T to, you know, talk about these meetings, and she wants us to understand, because I guess she is aware of the fact that I guess most of us aren't from a, like a British tradition, so we don't even know what a T is. I didn't. That T's, she says, are are not lo long, you know, as far as time goes. Um, oh. So knows it, but it's real fuzzy here. <laughs> <laughs> that T's are aren't long as I mean, they're not drawn out affairs. That that a T, she says, in in the English tradition is 
is kind of brief. It just you just get there and you have tea and do your little thing and talk and exchange news and then you're out of there. And that she says that that she she's trying to train us in in that tradition. She says it it's the it's the how does she put it? It's the it's the godchild. She says of the British clarity of thought that can go somewhere, accomplish something, be done with it, and get on to the next thing. That it doesn't have to be a long, drawn-out affair. Uh, and that she wants these teas to be like that. She says that, that for those of you who can make them, that they'll be for the next two uh, Tuesday nights, and, and that it'll be like this. I, I promise I'll try to be more on time the next time. But that it'll be like that, where we'll just get here and and sit down and, and we'll do whatever we're gonna do and I guess she'll address us and that'll be that. So that so that you can plan accordingly, like for your evening, so you don't think it's gonna be like an all night affair. It's just a tea. Okay. <laughs> okay. So tea's over. <laughs> <laughs>